Hi everyone. This will just be a quick video today, but I've been doing some benchmarks with uh, a few S3 Savage video cards. Uh, these were released by S3 back in mid mid ninety eight and, and ninety nine, uh, and they were very much released as a budget mid level card. And the reason that the S3 Savage interests me is that when I was younger. I was tossing up between purchasing a TNT2 M64 PCI or a Savage 4 PCI to go in my then Pentium 133. Both would be highly bottlenecked by the Pentium, but I, uh, I, I ended up picking the TNT2, which was a great card. But it has always interested me what uh, would have been if I had picked the S3 Savage. So, Today I've got a few benchmarks, we've got a few different cards, I've got the Savage 3D, which is the first one, uh, the Savage 4, which is the one I was looking at buying when I was younger, and the Savage 2000. Now this is using the same system as my Voodoo 3 shootout, so these benchmarks are comparable, and I have added the Voodoo 3 here just as a comparison. Uh, I am going to do TNTs and some other graphics cards in future. But this will just be a quick video going through some of the benchmarks. So, the Savage 3D, this is the first card I've got. I don't remember where I got this from, I think it would have... I didn't buy it specifically. Uh, this card was released in June 98, so this is the first sort of decent 3D card that S3 released. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, and this one has 8 meg of, of RAM. The next one is the Savage 4 LT. Uh, this one's by number nine. This, this company has made some very interesting cards because they had their own chipset that they released, more 2D based. Uh, so this one's an interesting card. It uses the NLX AGP slot standard so it can fit in some OEM cases. This one I actually did purchase uh, intentionally. This is the first sort of cheap Savage 4 card I found on, on eBay. It is a cut down version, the LT version, um, but as you'll see from the benchmarks, that doesn't really seem to make too much difference. The next one, this is the one I was hoping was going to be as close to the Savage 4 I was looking at back in the day, although I don't actually think it is. Uh, but this is the Creative Labs uh, Savage 4 version. But the clocks are running reasonably low on this one, so I, I don't think it quite matches up with the performance of the, the Diamond Stealth. Uh, the one that uh, I actually was looking at. So I'd like to get one of those Diamond Stealth ones one day. I don't have that card, but unfortunately it's quite hard to find now. So the, the Savage 4 Pro AGP, this one's an interesting card. I didn't specifically try and find this card either, but I did uh, get it in a box of car, video cards or something like that. And to be honest, I don't think I even realised it was a Savage 4 until later. I didn't look at it closely enough. It just looked like a bog standard TNT 2. M64 card, um, but as we look closely at the, more closely at the specs, this one actually is one of the faster ones with the faster memory. Uh, finally, the Savage 2000 AGP. Uh, this one I'm, I'm pretty happy that I picked it up fairly recently. I was searching it, it wasn't too expensive. This one's an interesting card. It was one of the last uh, discrete cards that S3 made, specifically before they were sold to, I think, uh, via uh, but this one was an interesting card. It was their last hurrah. They really tried to, to release a, a powerful card to go up against the GeForce. Uh, but unfortunately, the TNL engine in this is broken, so the drivers don't have it enabled. Uh, but otherwise, it is quite a big step up from the Savage 4. So we've got three, three different cards, or three different uh, generations of card. The Savage 3D, then you've got the three Savage 4s, and then finally this Savage 2000. Uh, now, if we have a quick look at the cards here, online you'll find the Savage 4 is usually, uh, core is like 125 megahertz and the memory is 143, that's sort of standard. Unfortunately, the Savage 4 PCI I have here is running at 110 megahertz and the Savage 4 LT is even lower than that. Uh, so I was, uh, I was hoping to get a, a faster Savage 4 PCI. Uh, but the Savage 4 AGP is sort of in line with the, the standard um, specs. Now, some of these cards may be overclockable, uh, but I didn't, uh, I haven't tested that specifically. 
Uh, now the test system, this is the same as my Voodoo 3 shootout. So again, no sound card so that we can sort of keep benchmarks consistent. Uh, so this one is what I'll be using for all my uh, benchmarks. Uh, next, drivers. So again, S3 wasn't great with drivers. Again, that was one of their main limitations. Um, the Savage 3D had some custom drivers, which I think was a mish, mismatch of different different drivers. So uh, that's what I've used here. Uh, the Savage 4, that was the latest driver, and the Savage 2000, also the latest driver. Uh, I, I didn't try any other drivers, uh, and I just uh, used these ones. So again, might be worth something looking at in the future. All right, jumping on to the benchmarks, Quake 2. So this one's in 1024. And this is what I thought was quite interesting is that the Savage 3D, and this you'll see from all the other benchmarks, is, is does hold up quite well to the Savage 4 LT and, and the other, other Savage 4s. The 3D quality of all the cards was really nice when I benchmarked. Um, really had no issues, no stability issues or really driver issues um, other than you know maybe some of the performances you can see here. So the Savage 3D was released before the Voodoo 3. Uh, this Voodoo 3 I've got here is the 2000 PCI version, so the lowest uh, Voodoo 3. Um, but the Savage uh, 3D was released before before them. So really the Voodoo 3 and the Savage 4 Pro uh, were released at a similar time. Um, but you can see here that the uh, the Savage 4 is, is the, half the performance of the Voodoo 3. So pretty disappointing. Um, it's actually slower than I expected. Um, I was expecting it to be, you know, maybe you know, definitely slower, but not not that much slower. So I'm not not super impressed with these um, results. The Savage 2000 is significantly better, as you can see here. So um, that's definitely more more uh, competitive. Its performance was more competitive when it released. But yeah, the Savage 4 was never never great. But it is, is interesting to see here that there is a fair bit of performance difference between, say, the Savage 4 PCI and the Savage 4 Pro AGP, and that's mainly because of the, the memory and core clock um, performance. So, yeah, a bit, bit, bit disappointing. Uh, if we jump over to Quake 3, interestingly, these cards actually kind of before, perform better under Quake 3 than Quake 2. I suspect that... S3 really optimized the Quake 3 performance because that's what was a very popular benchmark uh, at the time. Um, so again, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not unhappy with the, the Savage 3D performance. I think it's fairly reasonable for, for when it was released. Uh, the Savage 4 Pro, that's not too bad performance, um, but you know, again, I would have hoped for, for a bit more. So that's the Quake 3, and this one's at the 640 by 480. Uh, if we jump to 1024, so this one's in 16-bit color so that I can compare it with the Voodoo 3. Again, the Savages are really, uh, really struggling here. Uh, and it's, it's, it's just very interesting to me that the Savage 3D really is very similar to the Savage 4 LT in terms of performance. Uh, I, a lot of the places I read online was the Savage 4 was a big step up from the Savage 3D. I suspect that's from maybe some features, uh, things like that, but I really didn't notice too much difference between the, the cards. Now, these these two do have a smaller memory, uh, only 8 meg of, of memory, but even if you compare that to the other two, it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, so look, the Savage 4 Pro is sort of getting a, you know, a little bit closer now to the Voodoo 3, but still quite a lot, um, a lot worse. So uh, I think the next, when I do the TNT 2s, I'll definitely do a, an M64 benchmark and that will be interesting to see how the Savage 4 uh, goes against the TNT2. I think the TNT2 M64 is still going to be slightly quicker. Uh, moving on to 3D Mark, uh, this is where the Savage 2000 uh, is the sort of first benchmark that kind of falls behind the, the Voodoo 3. So I think again this is this is driver driver based. The, the, the 3DFX Voodoo 3 Direct 3D drivers are actually quite good. Um, I always assumed that they, they didn't put much effort into them, but they, they, it works very well in this benchmark. The um, Savage 4 LT is outperforming the Savage 4 PCI here, which is inter interesting. Uh, I think mainly that's just the AGP bus. Um, obviously, 8 meg of RAM is plenty for 3D Mark in 1024. 
But again, yeah, I'm pretty pretty disappointed with the Savage 4 Pro uh, performance performance here. Um, the Savage 3D, I think, is is quite good for the, the for its age. And moving on to the final benchmark, expendable. Uh, again, well, it's very consistent. Uh, this the clearly there's some driver issues here with the Savage 2000. So I suspect S3 really focused on the OpenGL drivers and not their Direct 3D uh, as much. So it's the, the Savage 2000 is really performing uh, not where it should be. Um, but otherwise, yeah, quite quite um, quite consistent with all the other benchmarks. So yeah, very quick video today. I just wanted to get this out so that we could compare them. There's a few other good videos on YouTube looking at the Savage uh, range, but not directly with each other. And the thing I've found with the, the Savage 4s is there's so many different variants of card out there and the speed they're running at the core in the memory is very, uh, there's a huge range of it. And my understanding is they're quite overclockable, so I'm not quite sure why the board partners released slower versions of it. Uh, maybe it was just the, the memory they could get their hands on at the time. So anyway, that's a, just a really quick look at the S3 Savage. Hope these uh, benchmarks have been of interest. Thanks, guys. Bye.